evening. This is Pastor T coming back to you live at five. Yes, indeed. We're going to keep this train moving, right? We got to move all the way to the station to day 100. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen in day 100. Day 100, we're going to be um, complete with this love challenge, but guess what? We're not going to be complete with our love walk, right? We're going to still be walking in love. We're not going to leave all these 100 days of teaching on the table. We're going to take everything with us um, along the way, but we're going to head over to two places. One spot um, we're going to go over to for those who are going to join in and let's look at the replay. Um, well, let me just say this. I love you. God loves you. I got to make sure I tell you that up at the top of the hour, right? I got to make sure that I get that out of the way because that's what it's all about. It's about love. And this is a segment on love. But let me tell you this. If in these amount of days that your love has not grown, then you're not opening up yourself to receive the love that you need to give or have. And so what I want you to do is to set yourself like a flint, right? To decide today that you're going to absorb these teachings and that you're going to take this to heart, right? That you're going to take everything that God has given you word and experiences and you're going to pull them all together so that you can increase your love this is what it's all about right this is not about me just by myself not just about you this is about us right so what's going to happen you may say pastor t you've been doing a great job and so now what's next what's next is this mm -hmm. what i mean we're not near we're not as near to the 100 days as we're going to be we're on day 67 Woo! right Woo! We are pressing in, pressing forward. We are climbing this mountain, right? This mountain of love, right? We are pressing in to this mountain of love. And what's essential about love is that no matter what it goes, it never goes anywhere, right? People say, you know, um, I used to love this person, but I don't anymore. Well, God says we're supposed to love, respect anyway love re regardless right whether we like a person or we don't like a person we're supposed to love any way so that's so that part out of the way that's not an option to love is not a, no to not love is not an option we have to continue to love right no matter what now that's the type of love we're aiming for in a hundred days you should get to the point you should get to the degree where your love is in full operation at all times. No matter if you disagree, you can disagree. You may love your parents, but you could disagree. You could love your siblings and you could disagree. You could love your children and you could disagree. Okay, so that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying here that the love we're talking about today is a faithful love, love that displays faithful promises. Now that's from God, that's from his word. But what we can do with each other, this is day 67. So we have no reason that by 60 and 67 days our love should have increased to such a degree that we can love people in spite of who they are we have to learn how to see people how god sees them right we can't see them through the lens of our own view our the lens of our own natural view is clouded right it's clouded and what god wants us to do is have a clear view right his love, love has a clear view his love is unconditional right and so he doesn't um, he doesn't make us uh do jump through any hurdles to receive his love and because god doesn't do that he doesn't want us to do it to each other right so we have to be careful and mindful at the same time that we don't allow people in our lives to feel like they have to buy for our love we're not buying love we're not um you know seeking love in the wrong places but um, so I want to tell you a little bit about what's going to go on after day 100, right? So we're not going to continue on this platform for day 100. We're going to finish here in this platform on my regular Facebook page. We're going to go to day 100, right? Right here, this station right here, five, live at five. As long as live at five can be at five, we're going to do live at five, right? Um, and so God has been good in 67 days. I've been live at five. So thanks be to God who always causes us to try up in Christ Jesus. But let me tell you what's going on. We're going to go over. I have two of the pages. And one of them is the Tiffany L. Robinson Pastor T page. 
So you can head over there now and you can uh, you know, like the page. Now you can go ahead and become a member on that page because we're going to go over there. And then I have another page called Talking with Pastor T. And talking with Pastor T, we're going to be getting into some other areas of love, right? We're going to keep the love train going. We're going to talk about some other platforms of love. The the public figure, Pastor T, will be more of everything that I'm doing, a composite of everything I'm doing. I'm going to take my talking with Pastor T over to my love talk and my relationship area, right? We're going to talk about love. And we're going to talk, continue to talk about love and we're going to continue to talk about relationship. So what I'll do in that platform, I'm going to let you know um, if it's not every day, I'm going to let you know when I will be there and I'll forewarn you and tell you when I'll be there. So I'm going to be promoting my Talking with Pastor T page um, after I'm here after 100 days. So perhaps I can put some dates early on once I know more. I can put some dates in my uh, dates in my talking with pastor t page ahead of time right so that you will know when i will plan to be there but i definitely will try to do all my best to be there by day 101 i will do my best to be there um but that all depends on what is going on at that time so i did you know ask the lord for the grace and the time to do the 100 day challenge and with that being said i'm going to have to schedule in the other things that I plan to do so that I can get things moving right. So that with that being said, let's get into what we're talking about today. That's the faithfulness of God, the love that displays faithful promises. These are promises from God, and we know God is faithful, right? Let's go over, journey over to Isaiah. Let's get into it. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 54 and verses 10. Isaiah 54 verses 10, and it says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall never depart from thee, neither shall the covenant uh, of my peace be removed, said the Lord that had mercy on thee. So though the mountains be shaken and the hills be moved, yes, my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. This is another translation. For nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God is faithful. God says here, I won't, I'm faithful enough. That my unfailing love, his love is unfailing. His love does not fail. The Bible tells us that God love does love never fails. God love never fails, right? It never fades out. It's not obsolete. So he's saying, though the mountains be shaken, though the mountains may be rumbling, the, the natural mountains may be shaken, the earth may be quaking, and things may be going right in our spaces. Things may be going the way, you know, different ways than what we planned. You know, this pan, this pandemic caused a whole lot of things to get out of sorts and be different than what we thought they would be, right? So he's saying, no matter if it's physical, natural mountains be shaken, and if the hills be removed, he's saying no matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter what situation arises, right? He says, yet, but my unfailing love will not be shaken. So his love is going to stay the same. His love is going to stay consistent. He's faithful enough in his love to assure us that his love is going to stay the same. He's saying also, nor will my covenant of your peace. He's saying, you will have your peace. I will ensure your peace, that your peace will not be removed. He's telling us right here that no matter what happens, our peace will still be with us. He's faithful enough to keep the peace. We thank God for being able to keep the peace. We thank God for everything that he's doing right because god is a promise keeper and i keep saying that because not because it's just a song but he's kept promises in my life he's showed me that his that he's a promise keeper he's shown you that he's a promise keeper we're here today because he's a promise keeper right he said he promised before the foundation of this world that if the first adam wasn't able to complete the work that he was putting him for he was going to send a second adam and he sent that second adam he sent jesus christ he sent him in flesh, in the flesh. So he fulfilled what he said he would do. He was faithful. And our Bible tells us a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Let's go over to number the next one. He says, um, Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Deuteronomy 7 and 9. I like the book of Deuteronomy. I mean, like I said, all of the word of God is good. But you can learn from the old as well as the new. So you can learn what happened in the old because it will be revealed in the new. So verses 9 say, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God. Here it says the faithful God 
which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him. Come on now, we got to love him back and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Well, that's kind of easy to do because none of us will be here a thousand generations, right? I mean, not us physically, but our seed can be here to a thousand generations. It can keep re regenerating, right? The seed can keep multiplying. Keep, the seed can keep going through. So what he's saying here is understand. This is another translation. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He's God. So if you accept him as your father, don't claim anyone else as your father. I'm not talking about your natural father, your physical father, the one in the flesh. I'm saying your spiritual father. There should be no other gods before this God, right? And so therefore that the Lord of God is indeed God, right? He is the faithful God. This is what Deuteronomy is saying here, that he's a faithful God who keeps his covenant. Covenant relationship is very important. I have covenant partners in my ministry. I have a covenant Christian center at the church. Because guess what? It's about covenant. we got to have covenant. When we come into covenant relationship, that means nothing can come in there and sever that unless you allow it. Right? It's a contract. It's, it, matter of fact, it's not even like a contract. It's, it's a spiritual agreement that's in the spirit that manifests naturally through relationship. Right? You build that relationship and you come in covenant agreement, right? We came into covenant when we became, we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. So when we come into covenant, that's more than just saying, I like you. I like you at the moment, but tomorrow I can't stand you. You know, that's not covenant. That's not covenant. Covenant is a more of a solid relationship that's eternal, right? It's an eternal state of things. And so he says for a thousand generations, because you know why he used a thousand generations? It wasn't saying physical 1,000 years. You got to know that in the spirit. When God gives time frames and some things, you have to listen to it in a spiritual tune where a thousand generations is just a long time, like forever, you know, kind of going endless because a thousand generations, a thousand, I won't be here for a thousand generations in the physical, but eternally, I'll be here for, for billions of generations, right? So until Jesus return and everything in heaven comes to earth, then that's when we'll all be changed, right? However, at this time, as I'm reading this right now, at the age I'm at right now, I'm not physically going to see a thousand generations. Spiritually, I'll see a thousand generations until Jesus returns or whatever God decides to do. But at this particular time this was written, he was saying a covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love. They're going to unfailing love again on those who love him. Come on, we cannot expect God to be this promise keeping God, this faithful God, and we're out here acting like he don't even matter. Oh, he matters. We need to make sure that God matters in our lives. We need to make sure that God knows that he matters in our lives, right? And how we have to take take these promises serious. We got to take our walk with the Lord serious. And we got to let God know that I love you. I thank you, Father. I, I praise God. I praise the day that, you know, you created me. You know, whatever you want to give him praise and thanksgiving for, God needs to know that we love him. He said, up on those who love him and obey his commands. You know, right now, uh, let me just bring it to the to the now, right? Um, I, <laughs> this is one of those things that has to be taught, right? This is a whole, this is a whole other teaching. But I will say this. The Ten Commandments was for, for them. We are under a dispensation of grace. So the Ten Commandments, even though it's in the Word of God, you know, thou shalt not kill. That's, of course, it's not right to kill, murder, uh, adultery, and all that. That's true. But we're not under those laws anymore. God, Jesus came to fulfill the law, right? He came, he didn't say he, say he came, to, he didn't come to take the law away, but he came to fulfill the law. So um, we can't be like, you know, we know people do things, but then under the under the new dispensation of grace, it came repentance and all that. Because see, a lot of that, they couldn't get this back in the time of Deuteronomy. They couldn't get this before Christ. Uh-uh. There wasn't none of that available to them before Christ. See, even Abraham. Abraham, it was accounted to him. They didn't say he was righteous. Understand that Abraham made a lot of mistakes. He did some stuff that wasn't right. So when it says that God counted to him for righteousness sake, that was accounted to him, right? That's almost like, and I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes because, hey, you know, it is what it is, but I'm just making this analogy. Just like a person goes to school and they get their, their social degree, they go get their bachelor's degree, then they go back and get a master's degree, and then they go back to school to get a PhD, right? They get that doctor in front of their name. 
Now, some people go and go through school all the way through to get the doctor in front of their names. And there's some people who get the doctor in front of their name honorarily, right? Because they've done a lot of literary works or they've done a lot of um, different literatures or writings or activities that particular establishment considers them to be accomplished in a particular area, right? So they then are considered a doctor by putting out books and uh, publications or whatever they may have participated in that that particular school considered, uh, uh, you know, something uh, literary or whatever it was. Because sometimes there's different re reasons that people get the honorary doctorates, right? I'm just speaking on the wise of some of the people I know. And so when you get an honorary doctorate, that means that you've done a compilation of work that uh, called you to be a doctor by what you have done, right? Some, something you, you've proven what you have done. But, um, but on the normal sense, normally if you go get a doctor in front of your name, that means you are a doctor of something, this or that. You went to school for that. You studied for that. But when you, when you get it outside of going to school for it, it's called honorary doctorate, right? So that means that um, we, <laughs> just like the commandments, you know, they are there, but we have to keep all of God's word is true. And so we are not under the law to say, you know, we, you know, we know you're not supposed to kill, steal, destroy, you're not supposed to sleep with nobody else's wife or husband or whatever. You know you're not supposed to do those things. But under the dispensation of grace, we have, through Jesus, we have repentance to, to, to free ourselves from the sinful state, right? Back in those days, they had to bring animals and so forth and so on. So when Jesus, when God tells us here in Deuteronomy, um, he's a faithful God to those who love him, we got to love him enough to, tr to treat his word as true, no matter if it was in the old or the new, right? So even though we may not be bound by the law, we still have to, he tells us to obey the law of the land, right? And so if it's wrong to do it, you know you're obstructing justice. You know you are uh, going against the law. Or you can be charged in the court of law, right? You still have to, you have to do what's right. And so he tells us he loves us who keep his command. So his commandments back then were the commandments they gave Moses. Now his commands is what? His word, right? His word is the command. His man, his word, he says that I, his word have you hidden in your heart that you sin not against the Father, right? So his word should be hidden so much in us that we don't sin against him. But this is about being faithful, God being a faithful God. And then the second, the third one is uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 3. 2 Timothy 2 and 3 and great. Thank you all for joining us, those that are joining in and leaving comments. Praise God for you. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and verses 13. And it says, If you believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. And so the Lord, it, it says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So here, um, let's, read, let's read what it says um, before that. It says, If a faithful saying, well, let's go to 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain a salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, um, for eternal glory. That's what we all want, right? We want that eternal glory, right? Um, it is, and so that's for us to reign with God eternally. It is a faithful saying. For if we, we be dead with Christ, in Christ Jesus, wait, wait a minute, let me read it over. If we, it is faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall live with him, right? So our life, we give up our life, for our own self, and we live for Christ, right? We live according to God's standards, right? Um, and then it says, if we suffer, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we would deny him, we also will deny ourselves, right? So we don't want to do that. And it says, if we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. So it's saying here that he um, he's going to stay faithful no matter what you do. If we are faithless, we do not believe or untrue to him, he remains true. God remains true. No matter what we do, no matter what we, if we fall away from him, he's still going to stay true. Faithful to his word and, and his righteous character. We, our character has to be righteous and our character has to stay safe. For he cannot deny himself. And um, this translation says here, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So we, no matter where we find ourselves in, in the situation, we got to remain faithful too. If we want to receive the blessings of the Lord, I mean, you know, it's no, the, the guy who's types and shadows, right? He, 
he takes things as natural to, con to pertain to things that's spiritual. So why? We can have an understanding. He uses things like farming and crops and, you know, the soil and seeds and money and, you know, animals. He uses natural uh, things that we can know. He tells if you put your money in a bag and like a money, if you're wasting your money and you put it in a bag with a hole, like a wet bag, you know if you start putting coins or money in there, eventually that bag's going to bust. So you can imagine that, right? You can imagine that without God saying, you know, get a bag, put some water in it, wait till it get wet, put some money in it. You don't have to do all that because you can understand what he's saying. Um, if he says that it's better for a rich man, to, he said it's harder for a rich man to go to heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. He's not talking about a sewing needle. That's why we have to be taught, right? This is why we got to go to Sunday school. This is why we got to go to Bible class. This is why we got to go to Bible study. Whatever courses is going on, get into something that can get you some more revelation because people of God are lacking in the information where it relates to revelation. We have had information too long. We've had the information. Now we need to turn it into revelation so we can know. Now the eye of the needle, let me just say this. Quickly, the eye of a needle is not a sewing needle. It's not the little eye where you're trying to put your thread through there. That's not it. That can be considered the eye of a needle in a sense of threading and sewing, but this is a, something totally different. If you look it up, um, if you research it, it's talking about a small door that's going into a particular place back in the Bible days. It's like a small space, and that camel cannot get through there, right? You got to go and look it up. It's they have pictures and all that. So just go and look up, you know, research the eye of the needle, the camel going through the eye of the needle, and you'll see where that's what that's where we're getting our basics from. That's what the word is talking about. So anyway, long story short, God is faithful in what he says. He says if we don't remain faithful, he's going to remain faithful. And this is something I learned um, in the ministry when I was in my pastor's church in Shreveport and even when I came here. And I miss my uh, impact family. God bless you all if you're watching. Um, we, we found out about God using God's faith, right? We, we can use our faith, but our faith may not be strong enough for everything that we may face or may come up in our lives. And so we, I learned how to use God's faith. I started saying, Lord, I want to use your faith. And then when I got here, uh, my pastor here is a faith teacher, right? He's a word of faith pastor and he, um, is strong in faith, right? His, his thing is faith. That's his that's his thing. Mine is love, right? Mine is relationship within the family mountain. Mine is relationship. Mine is love and finances, right? I know what God has called me to do. I know what God has called me to be. And guess what? Many things that God calls you to do, that is where you're going to get a lot of your challenges at too. In relationships, in love, in finances. That's me. Not that I've gotten um, in bad places with those situations, but I've had battles in that from a young woman to now i've learned quite a bit from the word of god as well as from my education but also from the word and the spirit of god revealing things to me and so when he called me to the mountain of family i was like why me because uh, and that's what it was it was about family money love relationship and that's what he put me so that's the things i'm gonna deal with i'm gonna keep on going with because he gave it to me um but in but the biggest thing is all about love that's that all that comes on the love right um, so let's go to number five, uh, four here. Um, Second Thessalonians. Let's go there. Let's sec Second Thessalonians, and we're gonna go to first three and three. That's my numbers right there. Three and three. <laughs> Second Thessalonians three and three. Let's see what it says here. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? The Lord is faithful, the one who will establish us and keep us from evil. The Amplified says, yet the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and set you on a firm foundation, which we all need, and guard you from the evil one. So he'll protect you. He'll put you on a solid footing, right? He is faithful enough to establish you, set you on a, a, a solid foundation so that the evil one will not be able to touch you. He'll guard you. He'll protect you, right? He'll shield you, Psalm 91, right? He'll cover you, right? Uh, so we, we know God is, uh, word is true. And so when we when we feel that protection from the Lord, we can go and sleep at night. Um, unless you're like me, your mind is constantly thinking all night long. You're like, Lord, settle my thoughts. Uh, he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. 
He will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. So that there go your guard. That there go your guard right there. He said He'll guard you from the evil one. He'll protect you no matter what's coming or what's going. And so, you know, we got to know God is faithful God. He'll establish us. He'll do what he says. That's what makes him faithful because he does exactly what he says he's going to do. And that's how we have to be, too, as people of God. We got to get to be more faithful. Uh, here, let's go to Psalm 33. I was just there because I read Psalm 91. Um, let's go to Psalms 33 and 4. And I'll give you the scripture name. I don't like to just bail out stuff to people and not tell them where I'm coming from. I think as a matter of teaching, you know, all these years, it's been imperative to me to know where are we coming from. I don't want to be lost, <laughs> you know, and I want to go read it for myself, too, to make sure you're talking about the right thing. Here it says, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. All the works of the Lord is right. And so this, this translation here says, for the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. So that means everything that God does for us and has done before us or about us, concerning us before the foundation of this world, he did it in faithfulness. He did it in faithfulness because why? He wanted to be our example. Why do you believe that Jesus came and died and endured all that stuff he endured? Because he was faithful. Why do you think that he Jesus wanted to be with the, the sinners versus these people who thought they had it all together? Why? Because he was faithful. He came down to fulfill that which was not able to be fulfilled before he came. And he was faithful to the end, to endure the cross, all the way to the finished works, even till he finished everything, till the cross was finished. He finished everything. That's faithfulness. He could listen. Remember, he tried to give up. He said, listen here, not my will, but not. He said, Lord, it did be your will to take this cup from me. He said, but not my will, but your will be done. He went ahead quickly. In the same breath, the same breath, he was like, take this cup for me. He wouldn't say, Lord, not my will. He said, according to, you know, what the, I'll do your will. I'll be faithful. I'll do what your will is. And all he did was display the same things that some of us deal with. You know, Lord, should I? Should I not? You know, should I do this? Should I not do it? And so in that regard, that, that kind of speaks volumes about how we as people have to remain faithful through the face of adversity. Even some of the worst things in our life that go on, we still have to remain faithful, right? And so that is definitely a teaching from our Father. So here, I want to let you know that was five of our scriptures on faithfulness. We'll continue part two tomorrow. Um, Will we come back live at five? We'll get into it. I did announce early on in the beginning of this broadcast that um, we're on day 67. Woo, woo, woo. And that we're going to day 68 tomorrow. But listen to this. Um, I have two pages, and I want to make sure you're connected to those pages. I have a Pastor T, Tiffany L. Robinson, Pastor T page. Go over there. That's the public figure page. Go over there to that page and like that page because I'm going to come off of this page. Um, I'm going to still have this particular page as a general page, but my page that I will be doing all my pastor stuff on is going to be on Tiffany L. Robinson, Pastor T page. So that's the public figure page. Go on over there, and I'll start putting more content there. Um, as the page continues to get built up, right? Now, I also have a pastor uh, talking with Pastor T page. Go over there if you're not already. I'll put it in the chat too um, and pretty much probably put it in my heading tomorrow, day 68, and I'll keep it there just to remind people to go over to those pages and like those pages. What's going to happen is after the 100 days here, I'm going to be done with the challenge, but I'm not going to be done with my charge, right? I'm going to go over to the Pastor T page, the Talking with Pastor T page, and use that as another platform for us to begin other discussions. So if there's other things and topics that you want to discuss concerning love, and I'm going to also be dealing with relationship. I'm going to add relationship to it, so the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. But I'm going to add relationship to it because I'm called to that area, and I need to start speaking on it. So we're going to have a pastor, Talking with Pastor T speak on it on relationship and speak on it with love and they may intertwine because we're going to be talking about your love has everything to do with your relationships anyway so they'll be intertwined there will be some things specifically about love but there will be some things definitely more geared toward relationships there right and then on pastor t talking tiffany l robinson uh robinson pastor t page will be um a composite of everything that pastor t is doing right so you'll get to see what the ministry is um doing um those of you who have skills, talents, and abilities. I'll be putting some 
things out there for the ministry on um, the ministry page, which is Tiffany L. Robinson Ministries International, which holds both of the ministries on that one site. I didn't want to have two different pages for the ministry. I just kept it the same. And then um, we'll be able to solicit volunteers and you all be able to join in our campaigns and everything that the ministry is doing. We want you to fully participate. We're in a virtual world right now, so you can be anywhere in the United States or abroad and still participate with what the ministry does. We are we're on Zoom and we have um, our YouTube page is up and running. And so every Sunday morning, we're streaming live at 1045 to Zoom. And, I mean, we're at 10 a.m. in Zoom and then we live stream the main message only so if you want to get the full message, you got to come into Zoom at 10 a.m. If you want to just join in for the main message, whoever is speaking that day, we're going to live stream them to 10, at 1045 over to Facebook as well as to YouTube. So we are coming up and we're also getting ready to uh, launch our text to give. So not only do we have Cash App and Zelle and uh, PayPal and we have um, Google Pay and Apple Pay, and all those kind of things. We also have the mailing address. You can mail your seeds in, but you also will now be able to set up reoccurring payments or one-time payments through our text to give platform. So we are working on that as we speak. So Pastor T loves you. We're working towards the kingdom goals and we, we want you to come along with us. We know that many people have um, are not assembling in their normal churches and people are trying to get back to normal. But if you're looking for a place to be, we'd love to have you over at CCC. Our motivation is love, right? We are focused on love. We have a church that's after God's own heart. And we would love for you to be a part of this church that we are building in God's name. Amen. And so we just thank God for everything he's doing in our lives, in and through us, and that we're being blessed immeasurably. So we just thank God for you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining in today, day 67. We're headed to day 68. Get ready. Tighten up your seat belts because as we get to the 100 days, we're going to be uh, exploring more about God's love, his faithfulness, his promises, his benefits, and his blessings. So I love you to life. God loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. Love you. Have a great evening. Do something fun. Laugh a little. Tell somebody you love them. Be blessed until tomorrow. Live at 5. Pastor T is signing off.